Here are a few reasons to never put too much of your trust in anything. Number nine, Hoover's free flights. In 1992, the Hoover company came up with what they thought would be a brilliant marketing campaign. Hoover's British division was approached by a now defunct travel agency called JSI Travel with an idea. The idea was to offer two free return flights to Europe with every purchase of any Hoover product worth more than a hundred pounds, all arranged through this travel agency. Those who tried to redeem the flights had to jump through many hoops to actually get the tickets and the agency would attempt to upsell additional services such as travel insurance and hotel packages. JSI Travel also thought it would provide a long-term benefit for their small company as it would introduce tens of thousands of people to their travel agency services. Initially, the campaign seemed like a success as the surplus inventory began to go down. And not that many customers actually used the vouchers at first. But Hoover decided to expand the offer to include destinations in the US. Bad idea. Because at this point, the consumer response increased enormously as Hoover was offering around 600 pounds worth of airline tickets for a purchase minimum of just 100 pounds. Who approved this marketing idea? Some customers paid for the appliances and then just left them in stores because they didn't even really need it. Overall, the 30 million pounds in increased sales that the promotion attracted was completely dwarfed by the 50 million pounds it cost to pay for all the airline tickets. And that's not counting legal settlements against Hoover for trying their best to not honor their end of the bargain on the tickets. Number eight, rare diamonds. How many of you guys know that the diamond engagement ring came to be only because back in 1938, De Beers decided that they wanted to sell diamonds at a higher price? Simple as that. Prior to a stunningly successful marketing campaign in 1938, Americans occasionally exchanged engagement rings, but it wasn't a traditional occurrence. De Beers masterfully created demand for diamonds by hiring a marketing agency that eventually created a campaign called A Diamond Is Forever, which became the official motto for De Beers. Not only is the demand for diamonds just a marketing invention, but diamonds aren't actually that rare. However, the diamond is the most popular gemstone. The myth that diamonds are rare continues to be believed by so many. The thing is, De Beers controlled most of the diamond supply until around the year 2000. They had created an artificial scarcity by limiting the amount of diamonds that were listed on the market. The result? Well, by 1979, De Beers diamond sales in the US had reached over $2 billion, compared to only $23 million in 1939. That's almost 100 times more in only 40 years. The industry banks on the fact that you won't go selling your diamond ring because, as the motto states, diamonds are forever. Number seven, fine wine. We all enjoy a nice glass of wine, especially after a long day at work. But are you 100% sure that the bottle of wine you just bought is actually what it is? Wine industry experts say that approximately one in every 20 bottles of fine wine sold today is actually not fine. It is merely a relabeled cheap wine. Of course, unless you happen to be a vintage wine collector, that likely isn't a concern for you. In the vintage wine collecting world, bottles are traded and sold for many thousands of dollars. Even so, wine scams certainly can trickle down to the ordinary consumer. In a recent famous case, one of California's biggest producers was duped into buying bulk quantities of French Planck, otherwise known as cheap wine, which it unknowingly bottled and resold under a popular label on supermarket shelves. Also, it's not unknown for unscrupulous growers to water down wine or add ingredients to increase alcohol or sugar content. The trouble is that unless you're a wine expert, you're not gonna notice the difference. Maybe it doesn't matter in the end, but hey, we should get what we pay for, right? Number six, VW shenanigans. Volkswagen's clean diesel engine ad campaign had sought to educate the public on misconceptions about diesel powered vehicles. One ad in the popular Old Wives Tales campaign took issue with the notion that diesel spew more airborne pollutants than their gasoline-powered counterparts. The quote-unquote misconception? Diesel is dirty. Well, all that sounds good if Volkswagen actually could back up what they were claiming. Volkswagen apparently had rigged 11 million of its diesel cars with defeat devices, basically technology designed to cheat emission tests. In reality, these so-called clean diesel engines emitted pollutants at levels up to 40 times the U.S. limit at times. 
The emission scandal prompted the Obama administration to order the recall of nearly half a million cars. This included a model of VW's luxury brand Audi, which ironically touted the tagline, truth in engineering. The scandal also led Volkswagen to abruptly pull its old wives' tales ads off the air. After months of investigation by a variety of federal agencies such as the EPA and a slew of legal complaints from car owners, Volkswagen agreed to pay $14.7 billion to settle allegations of cheating emissions tests and deceptive advertising. After paying that much money, we can only hope that they learned their lesson. Number 5. Is that really organic though? When is USDA organic not organic? Well, it's actually more often than you probably realize. Labeling is powerful. Studies have repeatedly shown that consumers can't detect any difference between organic labeled and conventionally grown vegetables, even when 30% of those tested thought that organic vegetables had to taste better. Some top names in the grocery retailing business, as well as meat and vegetable producers, have been caught and cited for claiming and labeling food as organic. Why companies would do that is simple. Organic foods can be sold at a higher price. Real organic foods don't actually cost more to produce, but if you sell something as organic that isn't, well, that's just wrong. Although you can never be 100% sure, the best way to increase the likelihood of buying and eating genuine organic products is to look for the official USDA organic seal. This signifies a product has at least 95% organic ingredients. If the product is 70% organic, the label can say that it's made with organic ingredients, while anything less than 70% can simply state organic ingredients. Somehow, there's no actual designation for 100% organic ingredients. Number four, coverage maps. You know those commercials when cell phone companies would show us those coverage maps that they had versus their competitors every chance they got? Those exact coverage maps are really just ways to avoid giving you any actual numbers. Even when a cell phone ad features legitimate statistics, chances are they were pulled from a study that the company itself commissioned. But no matter how they paint the country, it doesn't count as lying and it works because essentially the vast majority of us have no idea how things really work. Sure, most of us know that cell phones send signals to towers and internet access works by connecting us to servers, but do you know how many cell towers you have in your area or who they belong to? When your phone drops a call, do you ever know why? Because the truth is, no matter who you pick, the service is going to be patchy because of a whole bunch of limitations that are impossible to predict. Number three, Bangladesh factory collapse. The 2013 Savar building collapse, otherwise known as the Rana Plaza collapse, was an unfortunate building collapse that took place in Bangladesh. When the eight-story commercial building collapsed, over 1,100 people passed away in the accident. It's considered the deadliest structural failure accident in modern human history. A court in Bangladesh formally charged 38 people with murder. The owner of the building was arrested after a four-day manhunt, apparently trying to flee across the border to India. There were several direct reasons for the building collapsing. First, the building was built on a filled-in pond, which compromised the structural integrity. Second, the building was converted from commercial use to industrial use, and in doing so, there were three additional floors added above the original permit. If all that wasn't enough, the use of substandard construction material led to an overload of the building structure aggravated by vibrations because of the use of generators. You would hope that you can set foot in a building and have trust that it's safe to be there. But unfortunately, that's not always going to be the case in developing countries. Number two, Vibram's health benefits. Vibram was essentially the driving force behind the recent barefoot or minimalist running trend. Vibram advocated that this style of running made athletes less prone to injury, more efficient, and have strengthened muscles in the foot and lower leg. Muscles that were otherwise made soft and ineffectual by modern cushy running shoes. Well, supposedly anyways. Whether running barefoot is actually superior to using normal running shoes is something that's probably still up for debate. However, what Vibram claimed is not. Early studies showed that running barefoot could reduce impact in areas such as the knees that are prone to strain. However, later studies found that the strain simply shifted to other parts of the leg and foot. Barefoot running isn't necessarily better, it's just different. This is why Vibram ended up having to settle a class action lawsuit that accused them of making false and unsubstantiated claims about the health benefits of its Vibram five fingers footwear. 
The company had to pay out settlements to class members and had to remove claims that its products either strengthen muscles or reduce injuries. Sprinting is great for cardiovascular health. Number one, glass bridges. Glass bottom structures have grown increasingly popular in China, although many tourists may be rethinking their journey across glass bridges after a recent incident. First of all, there's a glass walkway that pranks tourists with some fake cracking glass. However, sometimes glass does crack for real. A brand new glass walkway suspended 3,500 feet above a canyon opened recently in central China, all to impress visitors and create a new adventure for thrill seekers to enjoy. But once a glass bridge starts cracking, it's probably not an adventure you'd still want to sign up for. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened with this bridge. The 1,300 foot long glass bottom walkway was built along Yuntai Mountain Scenic Park in Henan Province, China. The cracking was caused by a sharp object falling onto the glass. Luckily, no one was hurt or actually in any danger. The bridge had several layers of one inch thick glass, each of which can support over 1,700 pounds per square meter, and the bridge was officially declared safe. But hey, a crack is a crack, and it was enough to scare visitors away. I mean, would you trust just an official declaration? Here's what's next. In January 2017, someone on Reddit posted a picture of the sole of the boot right beside of a picture with imprints that look like swastikas. Well, as you can imagine, the internet did that thing it does where it makes something go viral and everyone has fun with it. At the expense of the company, of course. Now, to be fair, the California-based company...